maybe. But basically, something we do not know, but it's in the uh, literature that the rates of uh, success rate, uh, the failure rate is slightly higher in the maxillary arch, right? And uh, we also have seen that the papers have shown that there's a higher failure in implants in grafted maxillary sinuses, higher rate of infection and impact wound healing after second stage surgery. Now, so this is actually also uh, quite relevant because we all know that because when we are talking about smoking, what, what happens, right? It actually has a very so constrictive effect perhaps on nicotine and you, you have actually poor healing. So second stage surgery, for those of you who uh, do uh, implant surgery will know that we are talking about op opening up the soft tissue, right? The bone has already integrated, right? And uh, the failure actually comes from the second stage surgery itself. That means uh, the, the periodontium, right? When you cut open the gums, right? So that's really what it is about, okay? And as I mentioned earlier on, diabetes, osteoporosis will all compound the rates of implant failures, okay? Much more than that, okay? And so this is something is relevant. Uh, and we have to understand that smoking can give you a lot of medical problems. So the medical problems will impact on the patient's healing as well as the implant failure, okay? But there's enough evidence to say that we know that you, uh, you put implants in a smoker, there's two times higher risk of failures. Okay, that's for sure, right? And that's something you know. So it me what it means is this, okay? We have to give you some good practice points, okay? So we tell you all this uh, stuff, right? What are we supposed to do then, all right? So for patients who are smokers, you can proceed with dental implant therapy. So I'm sure every one of you are very glad. Eh? We can still uh, fill a pocket. <laughs> If you say that no, no implants for people who smoke, then I think a lot of population may not be have, having implants. So I think we'll run short of a, a lot of uh, implant cases, perhaps. I don't know. I'm just joking, right? Well, don't record this. <laughs> now, uh, <laughs> there are higher risk of failures, okay? Especially early failures. So that's important, right? Early failures is the word, right? And uh, late failures, very hard to classify. And maybe it's easy to understand it. Because it affects healing, right? But if it's actually healed, then, well, if it's already integrated, the bone interface, as you know, all know, bone is not very vascular. So, in a way, the smoking itself perhaps will not cause too much trouble. And uh, so, what are we telling you guys to do? So, you say we should advise smokers to stop smoking, right? Uh, uh, during the healing period, okay? That's sensible, right? And where possible, prior to dental implant therapy, and they should seek counseling to uh, help to stop the habit altogether, all right? And this applies to whether heavy or light uh, smokers, okay? So you may ask, uh, what do you mean by stop smoking? How long in the healing period? So it's all uh, no hard and fast rule, especially in terms of evidence as well, right? Some papers mention two weeks, some uh, prior to implant therapy, some people say one week, all right? And um, now, there are some uh, biologic principles that we can understand from smoking. When you uh, stop smoking, the immediate effect is, well, you don't have the nicotine, right? Okay? So the nicotine is a very so constrictor uh, sort of effect on the vessel, so you have less of that. But the tissues that has already been damaged by the oxidative stress, perhaps, uh, it's not going to work still, all right? So if you stop a week, maybe it's not going to uh, have much of a difference, honestly, all right? And uh, in oral cancer terms, I, I can tell you, right, if a patient comes to tell me, oh, I have stopped smoking now, uh, what is my risk for getting cancer now, right? So I say if you have stopped smoking for 10 years, right, then your risk down to normal, right? So, I mean, that's really quite a long time, right? So there are many late effects of smoking, so to say. The stress that's induced in the system, the problems that are caused to the patient may still be there, right? But if the patient is going to smoke anyway, so it's better to stop smoking before you put the implant, okay, right? So as long as possible, okay? So if you want to advise the patient at least a week minimum, if not uh, up to about a month, right? as uh, some of the papers were mentioning. And then how long do they uh, stop smoking after the implant therapy? So again, this is something that uh, there's no hard and fast rules, but certainly if you uh, work it on the fact that it's talking about healing, so we're talking about osseous integration, most of us will say about two to three months, right? So at least the two month period, okay? And this is in fact mentioned in uh, quite a lot of papers, the two months uh, after you put in the implant for these smokers, tell them don't smoke. Realistically, it's not possible, right? I mean, you tell these people not to smoke for two months, right? So it's something that the patient has to be aware of. but. You, as the surgeon, as the person uh, advising a patient, should inform them of the fact that you know there's a risk of early failures, uh, especially during a healing phase. So for them, if they don't want the implant dropping out of the mouth, 
then make sure you stop smoking, all right, as much as you can, all right. And of course, along with other things, all right, about oral hygiene and stuff. We all know that these are things you want to recommend patient. But certainly, in terms of uh, from the CBG point of view, talk about uh, evidence in papers and all that. This is what we have to give uh, to you guys. And uh, and that's all I have to say. I hope it's not too boring. And uh, hopefully, you know. Um, we all know what to do <laughs> for patients to smoke. I'm now going to introduce to you Dominic, uh, and uh, he's going to talk to you about uh, uh, his pet topic uh, on um, uh, connection and implants. Dominic has been uh, my teacher before as uh, I was an undergraduate, and I remember he, he's been doing lots of implants for a long, long time. Even during those days, uh, we were talking about blade implants, I remember, and uh, you know, he was certainly very impressive with some of his cases. <laughs> so I'll leave you to him. All right. Thank you.